Hello and welcome to my Jethro Tull record collection video. Before I start, I'd like to uh, talk about my video that I made about turntables. Now in the description, I put a link to Ian's channel, High Vinyls News Channel. And he does such a great service to the VC and YouTube in general where he to, at his own expense now, to great expense, he has gone out and bought a multitude of cartridges and phono preamps and turntables. And he's comparing all these things at different price points. He's comparing all the different cartridges, all the different phono sections, all the different turntables that he's purchased over the years. And he keeps track of all this stuff. And he's got now that, I think it's the Nagoka cartridge, which is half the price of these other ones, and it's destroying everything so it's really good to keep watch his channel and keep up with a lot of this stuff that he reviews because he's at the cutting edge of what's a great value in hi-fi so i'm going to put a link now underneath in my comments in the description of this video so yeah i want you all to go over there to his channel subscribe to him and keep up with that now if you could because on that turntable video i made it's just a rough, hey, this is something you could look at. He's got a lot better information than I did in my video, but go over to his channel and look at his stuff. Now, first of all, this is, this was, this is, this was, and it's on a gatefold. It's not a first edition. The first edition, this is a UK press. Now, the first edition was on the Pink Island and it had a textured cover and if you go on eBay and you look at those they're mostly two hundred dollars if you get a nice one with the textured cover and the pink rim and all that I think I bought this for ten dollars I think I still have the price sticker somewhere maybe no took it off but it was like ten eleven dollars of course I bought it thirty years ago at a used record store really good sound on this now Steve Wilson reissued this record a while back, and I made a video about it. You know, Steve Wilson, he likes to make digital records. He's not set up to make anything analog. He's not a, he doesn't remaster in an analog chain. He likes to make digital stuff. And he, re, he remixed it as well. Now, he remixed it. The remix was better, but the sound was not good. I did not like the sound on that digital record at all compared to this which is a third edition UK press, much better that new reissue that's made out of digital and out of ones and zeros. Now here's another one, Stand Up. This again was first issued on the Pink Island label. I don't have a Pink Island label. I just got a probably, it's not a, it's, I don't know, fourth edition Canadian pressing. And I was thinking maybe I should go out look at eBay and Discogs and maybe search out a couple of these early records. Of course, I don't have these on, on a Japanese press because they're very, very expensive. I can't afford them on Japanese pressings. Maybe I could take a chance and maybe get a couple on the Pink Rim or the Pink Island label, maybe up the ante a bit. But I really enjoy these records here and they sound fantastic. I'm happy with them. And you know why I'm happy with them? Because I have, I don't know any better. If I get a pink island label and I compare it to this, I'm going, wow, so much better. But I haven't done that, so I don't know any better. Right? Okay. Benefit. This is a record store day record. And if you look on the uh, over here, it doesn't have a number. Because the guy said it was a promo. I guess he got a couple of these and he sold it on eBay and I bought it. It's on the uh, Brown Reprise. The one I had was also on the Brown Reprise, but it was a Canadian press. And uh, this one did sound better. This one sounded a lot better than the Canadian first edition, the Record Store Day one. Sounded better. Okay, now we have, this is Jethro Tall, Aqualung. This is the 4LP. 45 RPM box set. 
they give you a cover in here. It's a gatefold cover. And I have, I have a Japanese insert because I've had, I think, two or three Japanese pressings of this record as well. And um, I stole that out of one of them, put it with my record now. I have a little insert with it. But these are Clarity Vinyl. Too much junk in here. Okay, here we go. Clarity Vinyl. We'll have a little look at it. You know, Classic Records, they invented Clarity Vinyl. And uh, you can see on the, on the back where it says Classic Records. There's not, there's no sound on this side. It just has a little strobe. So you can check, you can adjust your speed. But they invented the Clarity Vinyl. And you know, Chad's got that Clarity Vinyl now, and he's making his UHQRs out of that Clarity Vinyl. And it says right down here, not sure if it'll show up on the camera, but it says handmade on there. Because you can't, this, this Clarity Vinyl, it doesn't go through an automatic press. You have to do it in a manual press. So, I wanted to read this. These are the inventors of Clarity Vinyl. This is what they have to say about it. Clarity Vinyl represents the ultimate in vinyl formulations because it is compromised, comprised of over 90% of the highest quality copolymer av available. A key component in vinyl pellets used for manufacturing vinyl records. Further, Clarity Vinyl has no carbon black additive, common in vinyl formulations for LPs. Carbon black contains trace metals that become magnetized and cause electrical distortions in cartridges during playback that smears the sound. Taking out the carbon black, Classic Records is able to dramatically reduce the electrical distortions and thus bring more clarity to the playback process. Okay, so that's how they get their clarity vinyl. One of the things they do, they take out that carbon black. So it's kind of neat. You know, if you've got records that are blue or green, especially the translucent ones, they don't have carbon black in it. Man, that's, that's kind of a good thing. One thing, the other thing I wanted to talk about was this, these, these trace elements, this magnetism stuff. Because when I talked about this record before, when I reviewed this record, uh, I talked about Michael Fremer, had made a video and he talked about how he had got this record demagnetizer from somebody in Japan had sent him one. This thing was like a thousand dollars and it was kind of like a waffle iron. Okay, he took the thing, opened it up, put the record in, put it back down, waited a, a time and you took it out and it was supposed to demagnetize the record. And Fremer's going like, it's a piece of plastic. What are they? What are they talking about? Demagnetizing the record? It just doesn't make any sense. But you know what? I'll try it out. It didn't cost me anything. So he takes an old record that he had kicking around for 30, 40 years, whatever. He plays it. He says it sounded awesome. It sounded glorious. He took it in. He put it in the record demagnetizer. Took it out. Put it. Puts it on the record player. On his turntable. Plays it. And he says, "Wow, there's more music on the record." I don't understand how or why, whatever, but it works. Well, here's what happened. You know, you've got a magnetic pickup on there. This all runs, works by magnetism. These coils in there and everything in your cartridge is a magnetic cartridge. So if you've got magnetic particles floating around inside that record, it can fool the magnetic pickup to go somewhere where it's not supposed to go. That's distortion because you're not getting the truth you're getting something that's not supposed to be played so that's how that works that's what's going on with the clarity vinyl they, now chad doesn't talk about any of that when he talks about his formulation so i just thought i'd let you all know now here's thick as a brick this is on a mofi from the day and this is a later mofi when this came out you know it doesn't have the nice thick covers like they do today this is just a, it's a nice uh, kind of a shiny cover, but it's just glued together on this side and open on this side. And then you still have your nice little protector. And of course, the labels were white and uh, made in Japan. These records were 
course, they, they remastered them in the states at half speed, and then they sent the lacquers over to Japan, and they pressed them over there. They plated and pressed them in Japan. As far as I know, that's how it worked. Great record, we all know, and I have a mo nice mofi of that. Now, this is living in the past. This is a Cana this is a Japanese first edition, and if you're not familiar with the record, they had, here's the insert, it has like a, a book that's inside here, with a bunch of pictures of the band, and there's, you know, there's quite a few, nice, really colored, there's a nice book in here, it's attached, because in two of the slots on the top, they've got the records in here. I'll pull one of them out, just to show you that it's on the it's on the brown reprise label. Yeah, you probably hadn't seen that before because I remember when I bought this record, it was on a green chrysalis label. To me, that was the first label, but no. In Japan, anyway, the first edition is going to be on that brown reprise label like that. And they sound fantastic. This is a great sounding record. Lucky to own it. In very, very nice condition. Of course, it doesn't have the OP, OB on here. You know why? Because they want the moon for those. Yeah, they're way too expensive. I was lucky to find one without the OB at a great price. Next up, a passion play. This is also a Japanese first edition. And... Uh, this is another one of those records that Steve Wilson uh, re remade, and I bought one of those Steve Wilson uh, reissues, compared it to this, uh, yeah, it's, this is so much better. I remember getting a comment from someone who said they watched my video, and when I told them this was so much better, they went out and searched it, they got one of those, and they said, thank you, Ron, so much, because I love that record, I got that Japanese first edition, and it totally destroyed that Steve Wilson thing and everything else in my collection. And I'm so happy that I've got that record because of just the sound on it. It just makes me happy. And that does the same for me. Now we've got War Child. Just again, a first edition. Japan Press. And this is on the Green Crystalis label. Got the insert. It's got a nice, thick inner sleeve with it and I also still have the second edition of the record the second edition of the record is on the blue chrysalis label and when I got this I bought this first I got a really good deal on it so I picked it up knowing it was the second edition it didn't have an OB and all that you know I can get it for a good price I don't know if I paid ten dollars or something for it and I had a Canadian press at the time. I compared this to the Canadian press and wow, the Japan first press is so much better than the Canadian first press. What's up with that? They're making their second editions better than our first editions. And then of course you up to Andy and you get the original press. Now you've really got something. Jethro Tull, too old to rock and roll, too old to die. This is a nice Beautiful gatefold record. Again, it's on a Japanese pressing, on a first edition, chrysalis, and it's got a book because it's got that you know that Japanese writing and stuff on the inside. Cartoons on the other side. Next up, heavy horses, and this is just a Canadian first edition. Stormwatch, again, it's a Canadian first edition. You, I've seen these on eBay, these ones, and they're so expensive if you want to get a, they're like $100 for a Japan press. Then I have Just Roll Tall, Crest of a Nave. I really like this record. It's hard to get any type of a Japan press. I don't even think I've seen one. So I went out and I bought me a nice UK press. Very, very nice record. It's like near mint. I bought it from, believe it or not, a U.S. seller that had it. And he said it was near mint. And when I got it, oh yeah, beautiful near mint record made in England. 
I didn't have to pay the postage from the UK either. Then I got Rock Island. And this is a uh, CBS Records Canada, Columbia House. This is a, a uh, record club pressing. And then I have Rock Island. I have another one. This is a U.S. press that I got a good deal on. It's still sealed in here. A uh, copy of Original Masters. Again, this is just a... I think an American pressing of this record. Just an original one. And then I've got this. Catfish Rising. Yeah, this is in 1991. And it's a double LP. Got a lot of great songs on it. And I was able to pick this up in uh, in 91. I bought it up there in Atlanta. And thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Be back soon. Bye-bye.